Well, apparently once a year on my YouTube channel, I have to do another presentation related to Bootstrap. So I've just assigned the Bootstrap wireframe mockups project for my students. And what we're going to do, uh, the way we're going to do it that might be a little different from other ones, is one, we're going to take one of these wireframe sketchups, and then we are going to use HTML5 structural tags. And we're going to do it all on a code pen. Okay, so a um, couple things we want to do is we want to find the wireframe we are going to do. And I think I'm going to do one of the 20 examples by Specky Boy. Thank you, Specky Boy. Shout out to Specky Boy. Go visit the Specky Boy Design Magazine um, as a way of thanking them for giving us a wireframe. And I'm just going to look a couple here. User scale. This, this could be good. I think I'm going to use the Data Techniques Inc. as my. I'm going to use this wireframe and we're going to code it out trying to hit every region you see here with little notes to help guide us on the side. So that's what we're going to do. So we start with that. Next, I want to just go over the tags we're going to use. Uh, and so to do that, I have a link here from the, W3 ski, th the W3C, W3.org, their wiki uh, about the HTML structural elements. Uh, and before we do that, I just want to show you you probably can find some of my older tutorials that cover layouts and the HTML behind them. For the longest time, web designers would use the, the ubiquitous div to cover all of our sections. So if you wanted a header, you use a div because a div is a division, but we would give it an ID of header so we could style it differently. And then we would have another div for our navigation bar and another one maybe for the sidebar, the main, other sidebar, footer, etc. Well, one of the things I noticed before we had HTML5, and you might have noticed as well, if you go from website to website and you would go look at the tags, you would see a lot of people using the same ID and the same general structure. Well, that's because layouts have been looking pretty much like layouts all along. And every layout has some kind of a banner or a header at the top, a footer at the bottom. In fact, we go back to this image here. Hey, look, there's the header right at the top. Hey, look, that's the nav bar. And we got some columns here. We have like a side column here. We got a footer along the bottom. Okay. So these elements are appearing in the same, you're seeing them a lot. So people would just do these divs and many of us would use the exact same IDs. Well, fortunately, someone was like, hey, we're always doing this all the time. Why not have an actual tag for that purpose? And that's where HTML5 comes around. So the interesting thing about HTML5 is they added these tags to address these common visual and structural elements. Because technically speaking, it's structural too. So the tags are header, footer, nav, article, section, and aside. There are some others that they've added, but these are the main ones. Okay, the ones in this article, the ones I would like you to learn and use. Uh, some of these are really obvious, uh, but some you might not have thought of in the way that we do here. Number one is header, and that's to contain header content of a site. So let's go back to here. The header is right along the top. That goes with the whole site, correct? Well, a header doesn't have to just be for a site. We can use a header for a header for an article, for example. So if we go, uh, looking at a list of part here, let me pull up an article I was just reading. Because I want to tell you that on a given article, we can also have, and I'll just go directly to the site. Um, if we, we can go directly to the site. Oh, that's the one I was looking for in the news. Well, anyways, you get an article and you may have a header for the whole website, but you also might have a header for an article as well. It depends on the article itself as to whether you use it or not. Okay, so a list of part would be like the header right here for the whole site. And then when we go on to an, a particular article, we might grab all of this header information, all of this. This might be stored in a header as well because that's a header for this particular article. Okay, so keep in mind, you might have more than one header. 
Um, footer. You might have a footer for every individual article, like a blog post or something. There may be footer information for an article, but there's also going to be a footer at the bottom of the page. Nav. We may have more than one navigation bar. So every time you're creating navigational content, stick it in a nav instead of a div. Article is used for anything that's self-contained. So think about an article you may publish or share with someone else. That's an article. Section. Section has kind of two general ways of being used. One is grouping different articles into different purposes or subjects, or it could be used to define different sections of a single article. So you take one article and you break it up into different sections. You can do that. So this one is a little bit more flexible as how we use that. Um, and so we'll make some design decisions on our code. Uh, and many times it's up to the designer to figure out what that's going to be. And a side would be any kind of block of content that's related to the main content but not central to it. And a great example of an aside would be a pull quote. To illustrate pull quotes, here they are. You, you've seen them in articles where they grab a quote that's from the article itself and then they, they make it like the side content that sort of elevates it, makes it stand out a little bit. That might be a really good candidate for an aside because it's related to the article, it's even from the article, but it's not central to the main flow of the article, which is why a lot of times you'll see it on the side. There's other times you may see content on the side. So we'll look at that as we code it, okay? And then the last thing, and here's some examples. You might have a header at the top, a nav right here. You might have a sidebar, and they would use a section for it. And then the, another section for the main section. That section may have an aside over here, which would be content maybe related to it, additional links, other things that are uh, somehow related but not central. And then we have a footer at the bottom. Now, in the code, it might look more like this. You got a header, a nav, a section with an ID of sidebar, a section with an ID of main, and a side, and a footer. Now, the last thing I want to go over is you can look at this article on your own, and that is this little, little part here. What does that mean for our poor, sad divs that no longer have this important role that they used to have? Okay, we don't just ditch divs anymore. We're not just going to toss them aside and say, thanks for helping us. We actually can use them. And here's the general guideline I'd like to focus in on, and that is the div has a valid use. Use it when there's no other suitable element available for grouping an area of content. This is usually has to do with purely visual styling things. So their example is a div to wrap all the content on a page and using CSS to center, mm, this is not an American writer, all the content in the browser window. All right, that's fine. All right, so let's, let's go ahead and do this now. We need to create a code pen. If you don't have an account with code pen, do get one. Here's my account. I'm going to create a new code pen for this, and I'm going to name it after the mock-up that we're going to do. So I click, click new pen, codepen.io. I don't need, well, I will use JavaScript in a different way, but I'm going to close it for now. I'm going to keep HTML and CSS open. And now I want to change some settings here. I'm going to click on setting, and I want to give it the pen title. And uh, I'm going to base it on both the mock-up as well as the, uh, the name of the mock-up as well as what class it is. You know what? I'm doing this for another class. I might try to do a different one here. No, I'll, I'll keep doing this one. So it's called Data Techniques. P3 for period three. All right, um, give it a name. You can give it a description and tags later on so people can find your code pen and be impressed at how awesome you are. Um, and by extension, me, just kidding. All right, um, All right. so CSS, uh, we're gonna add, uh, we need to add bootstrap. So we go to CSS, we scroll down. I think I'm zoomed in a little bit here. No, I'm not. Go down to quick add. And this is, by the way, it's under settings. Quick add, drop down, bootstrap. For those of you that like foundation, you got a quick add for foundation. You can do the same thing with the foundation. Um, I like to just add bootstrap to any little 
code snippet I work on because it gives me some extra tools like the grid and things like that. So all I do is add the quick add there. I'm going to scroll up to JavaScript. We need to add Bootstrap to JavaScript. And that's down a little bit further. By the way, I believe Bootstrap should have jQuery, but if you wanted to add jQuery, you can do another quick add and add it here. This gives you some other cool little techniques you might want to use. Uh, don't worry about that for now. You just need CSS and JavaScript to, be, to add Bootstrap. Click Save and Close, and you're ready to begin. Okay. So we're going to focus primarily on HTML. We only have a little bit of time left in this video, so I just want to get you started on it. And so we're going to look at our mock-up. Here it is, data techniques. And you'll notice it's a center. You have the centered uh, window, and it kind of drops down a little bit. So we're going to use a div to center it, just like they talked about. Since there is no meaning to it, we're just stylistically adding some margins and maybe some background graphics. We're just going to create a div. I'm going to give it an ID of wrapper because it's wrapping everything. And I'm going to not forget to close it. Div ID of wrapper. Okay. And we're going to use some CSS to center it. So if we want to uh, center the wrapper, we're going to target by ID. We're going to put pound sign wrapper. Now on here, we're going to set the width. We're going to give it, uh, I'm thinking of 96% for now, and we may have to change it later. And we're going to make some automatic margins, but I want to drop the, I want to have a top margin as well. So I'm going to give it 4 EM. Now, we're going to use the shorthand for margin. And so to make it centered, we're going to use auto because we want an automatic right-hand margin. I'm going to use zero for the bottom margin and auto for the left margin. And we're going to add a little background color make it stand out. I'm going to use triple E like so. Now in order to see this, I'm going to go ahead and put a header one tag. Oh wait, we called it data. Now ah, what did we call it? Oh look, right now you can see that centering is starting to take shape. We called it data techniques. Until you write any HTML, it won't show you some of the CSS here. Okay. All right. So now we have some content in here. We got a wrapper. This is going to hold everything in our page. And we're just going to add one more part. We're going to add the header. In fact, the header one should go inside of the header. So we're going to go ahead and create a header tag. And our header one will be inside of it. So I'm going to tab that over. And we're going to close the header like so. So now we have our header. And if we plan on having any other headers, we may want to give this a particular class or an ID to set it aside so that we know it's a very unique one. For now, I'm not going to do that unless I need to. So I'm going to leave it like it is. Okay. And um, so at this point in the video, I'm pretty much out of time. So I'm going to pick this up in the next video.